All right, good afternoon everybody, it's Jay again, and today we're going to be talking about mangoes, and specifically desert mangoes or hot weather climate mangoes. It is September here in Phoenix, Arizona, and when you think about mangoes, you don't usually think about dry, hot desert climates. You typically think about more of a humid tropical area, maybe more like Florida, when thinking about growing mangoes. So the question is, how good are the mangoes when grown in the desert? How good is the fruit compared to other parts of the world? I'll tell you, mangoes are probably grown, it, probably the most grown and eaten fruit on the entire planet. So mangoes will grow in just about any climate. But we're not talking about other climates because I live here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're going to be talking about specifically hot weather climates and how good is the fruit. Does it compare to mangoes from Florida or does it compare to mangoes from any other part of the world or are they not as good? Well, I will tell you for a fact that I do think that we grow some of the best mangoes in the world here in the desert. Now, I can only really tell you about Phoenix because that's where I'm at and that's where I'm growing these. So I've got a lot of familiarity about growing mango trees in the desert or hot weather climates. And I'll tell you, I have had mangoes from all over the world. I've been sent mangoes from different people. I've tried probably every type of mango that Florida produces. And I'll tell you that the mangoes that we grow in the desert are at definitely in the top five mangoes in the world because we've got the heat here and the heat is really good for ripening fruit and really good for ripening mangoes. The other nice thing about it being in a dry desert climate is that you don't have a lot of humidity. So when you don't have a lot of humidity, you don't have a lot of the diseases that are carried on mangoes that are grown in an area that's a little bit more tropical or a little bit or a place that's a little bit more humid. And so the fruit ends up being absolutely perfect when it is grown in Arizona or a hot climate and grown in your own yard. So I've got some examples here of some mangoes that I picked today. And these, ha these four happen to be Malika mangoes. And I want you guys to check out the quality on these mangoes and look at the beautiful skin that they produce. I have not seen more perfect fruit coming from anywhere else in the world than the ones that come from a desert climate. So if you'll look at the skin on these, it is absolutely flawless. There is not a, not a spot on these. There's no bacterial diseases. There's no fungal issues. And none of these even bleed sap. So none of these have that dark mark that's coming from the top of the stem area where they start to bleed sap. But let me kind of roll this around and you guys can see that this thing is perfect. Blemish free, there's no insect damage, there is no bird damage, and there is no mice or roof rat damage. The good thing about mangoes is that when they're grown in an area where this tree is not native, or there aren't a lot of these trees, well then you don't have a lot of the pests that get into these fruits because those pests aren't here because there aren't as many mango trees here. Now, if I had this to do again, I think that I would probably plant my entire yard in just mangoes and I would have a mango orchard because I'm telling you guys, look at this. Look how perfect these are. These are what I would call premium quality, especially for a desert fruit. These things are absolutely perfect, every one of them, right? And fruit sells for a lot in some places, particularly Japan. If you're looking at mangoes in Japan and you're looking for a fruit, well, you may pay anywhere from $30 to $100 per fruit, depending on what that variety is. Well, all the mangoes that we grow here are going to be fiberless. So they're all going to be extremely soft fleshed and they do not have all the strings. They don't have all the, the fiber inside of the mango 
which is which is usually those type of mangoes are grown so that they can be transported because otherwise they're going to damage and bruise but something like this you're going to you're going to take care of just as well and then i hand pick these wash them kind of grade them and then i'll usually give a lot of the premium mangoes like these as gifts because man getting a perfect fruit like this is definitely a good gift so i like giving fruit and i try to grow things a little bit more like they do in japan which is uh fewer fruit but extremely high quality fruit that come off of each tree so these are four mangoes that i picked off of the malika mango tree um, today and these crop out about four a day over about a four week time period so you get about a month of harvest off of each particular variety well now we're into september we're getting into late september into october and there are still mangoes on the trees so i kind of wanted to go over these real quick with you guys and show you how beautiful and perfect the fruit are and I will cut into one of these here in just a moment so that you guys can see what the inside of the fruit looks like because it is just as beautiful as the outside of the fruit. So I've got my scale out here and I wanted to kind of weigh one of these so you guys can see how much a mango weighs or how much the fruit from the valley weighs. So let's take one of these. Got my scale zeroed here. And there we go. So we're looking at one pound, 0.6 ounce. So almost one pound, one ounce per fruit. So you got to figure if you've got a tree like this that has at least 50 mangoes on it, well then you're going to get at least 50 pounds of fruit off of just that one tree um, over, the, over the season. So I have about 60 mango trees planted in the yard. I wish I had a lot more, but I've got about 60. So if you figure, if you've got 60 mangoes and they're putting on 50 pounds of fruit each tree, well then you've got quite a few pounds of fruit there that you're going to enjoy. And you're gonna end up giving a lot of these away or freezing or storing these, which I will show you this in just a moment. Uh, so another thing that I've got here on the counter here is I want to show you how these mangoes get started because we grow a lot of our own mango trees and graft our own mango trees. So this is a project that's been going on for about the last three years. And basically what I do is I take the mango seeds out of the locally grown mangoes the ones that i grow here in arizona i take the seeds out of these and then i grow them i germinate and i grow them and then i take these after about a six month to a year time period and i'm going to graft onto these to get my own varieties and then that way everything is adapted to arizona i've got some more or less native mango trees okay so i kind of wanted to show you guys these because i propagate these about two thousand at a time so currently i've got about two thousand of these mango trees that are growing and ready to go and the reason i grow these in a little bit of a smaller container at first is because i would like to eventually get to the point of shipping so i would like to ship out some of these mango trees to people especially in hot climates that would like to enjoy growing their own mangoes um, if you guys would like to see a video on how to grow mangoes uh, from seed uh, go ahead and put some comments um, go ahead and some, put some comments down below um, i do a lot of these at a time like i said so I've gotten it nailed. I've got the kind of the process nailed to where I can get 100% germination off of each mango seed. And then these will eventually be grafted, like I said. And I'm going to do a few of these as cocktail trees now because I think it would be cool to have a bunch of different varieties of mango 
on one tree. So this batch will probably be a bunch of cocktail trees. Uh, but the idea here is to not import anything from Florida anymore or from California. The idea is to have everything here that's locally grown and locally grafted because those trees do a lot better just like a lot of the trees that I grow here for the nursery. So like I said, we grow these about 2,000 at a time. I've just got a couple examples up here to show you, but if you guys are interested in a video on how to get 100% um, germination out of every mango seed or mango that you eat, um, I can definitely do a little video on that and gr definitely grafting your own too. These trees that you're seeing here are about three months old, so they grow very, very quickly and these will be these will be grafted very shortly but you can see the kind of height and vigor and growth that we get off of these even these little trees <clears throat> um, in these smaller pots so i've got a, like i said i've got a couple examples here i want to show you real quick but growing mangoes from seed and grafting your own is a very very rewarding process and it's extremely fun and it's extremely, extremely easy to do actually if you've got the right detail. So like I said, if you guys want a video on growing and grafting mango trees, well, I can definitely get that made. So here's another one here. And they're, they're beautiful. Like these trees come out excellent. And like I said, if you've got something that's locally grown and grafted, well then that eliminates the need of having to bring anything in from out of state like say from florida or from california so this is in a little bit of a larger pot and you can see that it's a little bit of a larger plant um, you don't need necessarily need a big pot to get mango trees started as you can see this is a little bit bigger pot than these but really you can do it with whatever you have laying around there is no specific pot for growing mango trees i've just got a couple different sizes here because I want to ship a couple different size trees. I want to have this smaller size here and then this larger size here and then these are a good shipping size. So of course these will get a lot larger before they're ready to be sent out but you can see that these are super quality trees and we've really got the whole process nailed from growing them from a seed to grafting the trees to growing it until it actually provides you fruit. So it's more or less a closed loop process and we've got this nailed because mangoes are my favorite fruit tree and I would like to see a lot more of these grown in the valley because I think Arizona mangoes are probably the sweetest, best tasting mangoes, oh my gosh, in the world. Like you cannot get the flavors that you can get out of ripening mangoes in the extreme heat. So I'm gonna pop outside real quick and I'm going to show you a couple of the larger mango trees. And then I'm gonna come back in and I am going to cut one of these open so that you can see the quality of the fruit inside. So yeah, guys, if you like growing mangoes, please comment in the comment section below. I do read your comments, believe it or not. I may not answer to all of them because I don't have a whole lot of time to be on there. I'm not exactly a YouTuber. I am more of a, of a plant grower and a nursery and a propagator because this is the part that I, that I really, really enjoy. And I can help you guys get started and grow anything you want <clears throat> from seed or graft whatever you want. Because like I said, these are three examples of, I've got probably 2000 mangoes going right now and I've got a whole bunch of other really cool exotic plants also including lychee uh, rambutan uh, spanish limes or canepas uh, jackfruit i grow a lot of, of stuff here locally so that it's adapted to the climate so let's pop out outside real quick and take a look at just a few mango trees okay so this is one of the larger mango trees that I have in a pot. This is one that's been grown and grafted. And as, and as you can see, they become a very, very large plant very quickly and will produce an extreme amount of mangoes even on this size tree. So this one is 
this is further down the process, which I, if you guys want the video on how to propagate and how to graft mango trees, well then that, I'll show you the different sizes and steps as you go if you guys are interested in seeing that video. But this is a larger one that's been grown and grafted and you can see that it's a pretty good size back here on the pot and this is of production size. So this tree, this is a carry mango and you can see that this tree is right about the, the height of me, so right about six foot. At that height, they'll start producing extremely well and you can get at least 20 mangoes off of a tree this large and as they get larger, you're going to get more like 50 mangoes per tree. This is another one here. This is a juicy peach. This one is quite a bit taller than me. This one's going on about the eight foot mark. These two are grafted in pots. And then of course I've got a bunch in the ground. So as you go around the property, you will see mangoes pretty much everywhere. And they're really, really close to each other and they're kept a little bit smaller so that I can fit more in here. So in this little area here, we're talking about probably along the lines of 10 or 15 mangoes just in this little section here. And all these are taller than me. And in fact, they're getting up to the height of the top of the greenhouse there, uh, which we can also talk about in another video is this uh, greenhouse that I'm working on. And you can see that these do really, really well, but they need a little bit of filtered sunlight. So you don't want to put a mango tree um, in the full sun because you will end up burning it until it gets a little bit larger. So once it's larger, like you can see this one up here, this is a Pimpsing Mum. It's larger, it's getting to the point of about, you know, 12 feet high. So they will grow and adapt to your yard, but you don't want to uh, burn a small tree by putting it out right in the middle of the sun. Now, will these grow from seed if they fall? So what happens if I miss some fruit? So if I miss some fruit and they end up falling on the ground, they are going to germinate. So underneath almost every mango tree, you can see a couple over here too, almost every mango tree is going to have some seedling mangoes that have naturally germinated in the really good compost soil that's around the well of the tree. And as they get a little bit bigger in size, well, then I'll probably graft onto these also out in the yard so I've got some different varieties growing throughout the yard. Now, there's no reason to dig these up and repot them as a seedling and start that way because it's much, much easier to start if you've got an actual seed. So growing mangoes in Phoenix, Arizona is extremely rewarding and we get a lot of fruit off of them and they just so happen to be some of the most perfect fruit in the world. So you can see that these guys look extremely good. They are planted underneath a pecan. A pecan tree is right above them, so that's what's giving them a lot of this, this filtered light. So, all right guys, let's go back inside and let's do a little taste test. All right guys, so we are back inside and I have cut one of these open i cut the one open here on the end i would have liked to have done that on camera but i've only got one hand free because i'm holding the camera with the other but as you can see here that was a beautiful fruit inside as i cut that open and i'll tell you what the juice like you've never seen anything like the juice that's produced from these mangoes these things are juicy and soft and absolutely beautiful so you can see there i'm just going to do just a little squeeze test on there but i'm sure you guys can see the amount of juice that is actually in this mango and you can also see how easily it separates from the peel you can literally peel these mangoes like you would an orange you can literally just peel this off right <clears throat> but i prefer to eat these with a spoon like a dessert so what you're going to find is with homegrown mangoes, 
you are not going to have all that fiber in them like you would a store-bought mango. This is a completely, completely different beast, guys. This is so soft that you can literally scoop in, as you see, as, as I've done here, and you can scoop out some beautiful pieces of mango to try the fruit. So I'm going to go ahead and give this, oh my gosh, look at that, guys. I'm going to go ahead and give this a little try. Oh man, that is amazing. And I would literally put these mangoes against any mangoes in the world because like I said, I have tried them before. Look at how beautiful this flesh is. And if you grow your own, you get them at least six months out of the year. If you try to find mangoes, at well, Florida is done on their season for growing mangoes. And even if you try looking at the store, you're not going to find that many mangoes because they are out of season here. So when you grow your own, especially in a hot climate, you're going to have a much, much longer season than you would commercially. So why mangoes aren't grown here on a commercial scale, um, I really don't know other than the fact that maybe just people don't know that they'll work here. So the more that we grow, the more I'm hoping people will get interested in growing mangoes here in the desert. Now, I will tell you this. So if you are wanting to grow mango seeds or mango trees, like the ones that you see here, there is a stark difference between the ones that you grow yourself and the ones that you're going to buy at the store. And what do I mean by that? So it's going to be it's going to have to do with the interior of the seed after you take the seed coat off. So I have a really really good example right here of a mango seed that is going to be that you will take out of your your fresh fruit or your your mangoes that you grow yourself. So what ends up happening is on the fruit that you grow yourself when you crack open that seed shell what you'll notice inside is that the tree has already started growing. It's growing and it's actually germinating in the fruit, okay? So when you take off that, the husk, the, the cardboard husk that's on the outside of the, of the seed, you will notice that on the interior that this tree has already started to grow and germinate. And man, they look really neat. I mean, nature is really, really cool. Look how cool this is. So you can see all the roots. You can see the root system. And you can also, this gives you a good example to show you how they actually grow because I think that's also a very large misconception. So you can see here at, up at the top, you can see that the plant, the tree, has actually germinated here up at the top and has actually started to grow. And then the root comes out right below it, which is right there. And then that has grown and grown all around this seed in order to suck up a lot of that extra moisture. So if this fruit were to fall on the ground, it already has a really good start of growing uh, right out of the fruit. I mean, look at that beautiful, beautiful root that's surrounding that, that seed coat. And it's already pretty good size. All right. So... Mangoes have a black root. They've got a dark black or dark brown root, as you can see on this one. And you may have the tendency to think that that's dying or rotting, but that's just not the case. That's just the color of the roots. So in the case of this mango or fresh grown mangoes, if you grow them yourself, you have to propagate this one just a little bit different than ones that you buy at the store. The store-bought ones will absolutely work, but they are not going to have this root system that's surrounding this root. So these already have sort of a head start, and if you guys want a video on propagating these, like I said, I will show you how to handle these or what to do with trees that have already grown like this. And it's a matter of getting the roots back off of the fruit, back down into the soil. So something like this, you'll discover in your mango trees that you grow yourself. So don't be scared or worried. This already has a pretty good start. 
it's already been germinated for you. So these are a lot easier out of these homegrown mangoes. In fact, if I look, if we open the seed on this one, we're gonna see right about the same thing happening on the inside of the seed on this one. So, all right, guys, that is about it for this segment. Like I said, if you guys would like to see some videos on growing or grafting mangoes from seed to fruit, go ahead and put some comments down below, and I will do some videos on how to get you guys started so that you can enjoy high-quality fruit like this on your own. All right, guys, thank you for watching.